I started a series two weeks ago about six stocks that you had to own if you were going to play in the future development of our economy, the world's economies. And the first one I spoke to you about was Amazon. I followed up last week with Google, and today I want to talk about Apple. I just finished an article that said Apple is running out of steam, that they can't sell as many cameras as they have in their past, that they aren't spending enough money on research and development, and Apple is being, by this writer, downgraded to a hold. I want to put go on record saying I don't agree. I agree that I believe that Apple is a buy. I believe it is a buy every chance you get. You, you'll see in just a minute, it has pulled back a bit. I believe it will pull back a bit more, which is supported by the past four videos that I did this past week, and, that, and this will signal a time to buy Apple, as well as other stocks. So what I want to do in this video is give you the supporting data that I have relative to why I think Apple is a stock that you just, anytime you've got an extra $200 laying around. Um, right now, it's $143.97. If you've got that, go buy a share of Apple with it. I'm not a financial advisor. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. I'm, uh, I, I'm an educator. Uh, my role in life at this point is to share my knowledge and to help more people make a good uh, contribution to their wealth by learning how to invest in the stock market. I am a member of the baby boomer generation who basically are financially illiterate. Uh, it was never taught to us. It was never shared with us. And um, I think that is changing as a result of some uh, activities that use the acronym of FIRE, and that is financial independence, retire early. I applaud that. But in this video, I want to talk specifically to why I think you need to own Apple. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, the six stocks basically uh, are are all in my mind tied to. Uh, the disruption of business, of investing by technology. And those technologies take a number of fields. For the most part, they are involved in healthcare and electric vehicles um, and, and biotech. So with that in mind, I have shared, as I said, that one of the stocks I think you need to own is Amazon. They are the largest owner of data. They are adapting very well to convert that data and analyze that data with artificial intelligence and, and then use it to better their position in the market. The second one I talked to you about was Google. And I like Google, again, because they are owners of a tremendous amount of data. I told you that I believe they will go out of the advertising business in the future, maybe 10 years. But in the future, advertising won't be necessary because I won't be buying anything. Not because I'm dead, it's because I will have an avatar who will make all my buying decisions for me through the use of artificial intelligence. But Google will be in the healthcare field, as will Apple. And that's where I want to take you and show you wh why I believe this is the case and why I believe it has been and it will continue to be bit, uh, uh, driven by a inflow of capital into the markets, whether it's from individual investors or our federal government injecting capital to take advantage of technology and to avoid the problems that are facing our nation at this time, number one of which is a virus that is running through our population, 
hell bent for leather, and hopefully we can stop it, and then make sure it never happens again. And I believe that Apple will be a play in that game. So let's look at the chart and see if you don't agree with me that if you follow the money, you will get the signal to buy more Apple stock, particularly as it's in a bit of a dip. Let's look at the chart. Okay, we're back at my favorite chart <clears throat> that shows the movement of the money. Again, my thesis is if you want to know uh, where the stock market is going, you follow the money. My contention is that we took our national debt in 2020 uh, from 20 trillion to uh, 28 trillion. And I showed you the movement of that money um, as it went in direct line with that of the NASDAQ market. So let's break it down further. And that's what I've done in this chart. And I've, in the past Thursdays, I told you that one of the stocks you wanted to make sure you owned from this point forward or that time forward was Amazon. Well, that's the yellow line on here. And you can see it pretty well mirrored the S&P 500. Then I talked to you about uh, last week about Google. And as you can see, Google ran with the S&P 500. And then starting in February, when the stocks really went to value, when the market went to value, you see Google gained strength and uh, gained a lot of strength. The uh, aqua line is that of Apple. And you can see that Apple has outperformed them, them, them all. If we go back to, and I'm looking here in July, of 2019. Now let's move it forward and bring them all together to this point here in 2020 when we said $8 trillion came into the market. Where did it go? Well, as you can see, as we went into uh, the coronavirus d uh, dive crash, the big benefactor was Amazon. And that's to be understood. Everybody was at home. Uh, everybody started getting checks. Everybody wanted to buy something. So what did they buy? Anything and everything that they could on Amazon. And then that ran out. And as you see, starting in this July, Amazon d decreased in value uh, or comparatively substantially. But Apple continued to maintain its strength, challenging Google. OK, so I then contend, where does it go from here? Where does Apple go relative to uh, the NASDAQ, relative to what I would call its uh, competitors or its compatriots, whichever way you want to look at it? What's in the hinge, what's in the play is Joe's 3.5 million. I also believe what's in play is healthcare. So of these stocks, who are the biggest players in healthcare? Well, I happen to wear a Fitbit. That's Google. Apple has its Apple Watch. I just read an article where Apple is introducing to its Apple Watch, as I know that Fitbit has introduced to its watch, a program that senses the body uh, for its temperature at night, for its um, heartbeat at night. They're gathering data on me on this watch to, to look for any abnormalities and then apply them to an algorithm and tell me what my prognosis for whatever is. Apple is now working with Biogen. This was just announced uh, on the 21st of this month. They are working with Biogen to not only use their phone, their, their, their watch, but also their phone to monitor the habits and the activities of elderly people to see if they're losing their cognitive function. So in other words, if they see they can't type as well as they used to, that then is data. 
if they see that they can't focus their camera or any other function in the camera, that is data. You then compare that data with all the other people and you come to conclusions. And then you notify them through the phone that your health needs to be checked. You need to go to the doctor. So if you have this data in that through artificial intelligence and algorithms analyzing the data, not only from their watch, but also from their phone, do you think maybe that Google and Apple are going to be a big player in this healthcare revolution? I do, I do. I just read an article on Apple saying they're running out of, of, of juice. That they, everybody, 67% of the population who is going to own an Apple phone already owns it. So their market isn't there. What the writer didn't recognize is that that's not where Apple's going. Apple, trust me, Tim Cook knows the numbers. What he sees his future in is in the Apple Watch. What Google sees their future in is the Fitbit. That's why Google went out and bought Fitbit, because they recognize the future. The next big thing is healthcare. The delivery of healthcare, the delivery not of diagnosis, well, yes, of diagnosis, but not of treatment, but of cure. And the recognition that if we have the data on individuals and then we have artificial intelligence and algorithms, we can change the way healthcare is delivered. And that's why I wanna to continue to own Apple. The world has not woken up to this. You can see it. Follow the money. When the money comes, $8 trillion, it goes to these stocks. Now, where does, where does Apple go in the future? As I have said, uh, they are going to, they are very strong on wearables. And they have said, they have recognized that the best place for a wearable to be is not on your wrist. So watch for some new wearables from Apple. And this is a stock you want to own if, if, and you want to pass it on to your children and your grandchildren because Apple is here to stay. Again, where did the money go? Follow the money. This green line represents eight trillion dollars. And it's telling you right there where it went. Okay, if you've seen some of my recent videos, you know I'm depending more and more on this chart. This chart that I've created on uh, tradingviews.com, there's a link to it down in, in the description, because I believe that we are in a very unusual time where money is cut flowing into our economy at rapid rates from from uh, the government's uh, uh, injection of $8 trillion in the last 16 months, all the way to the wealthy people who are accumulating wealth, looking for a place to put their money. It's certainly not in treasuries. It's certainly not in bonds. It's going to go towards those things that are going to change the way you live. And there is there are things that are going to change the way you live, such as electric vehicles. And we'll look at how Tesla fits into this diagram um, next week. But the, the big move, the big opportunity is the revolution that is going to make the digital revolution look insignificant. And that is the medical revolution, the healthcare revolution. And again, the stocks that I buy are gonna be up to their elbows in it. They recognize, they recognize that the, the internet is important. 
it opened a whole new world to you. The electric vehicle is important. It will clean up our environment. It will stimulate an interest in automobiles again. But the most important thing to any of us is our life and our health and our longevity. And that hasn't really been available at any, although I started to say at any speed, or certainly our life expectancy has gone up, but not like what's going to happen in the next 10, 15, 20 years. People we celebrate, Will, uh, Willard Scott used to celebrate 100 years. We're now seeing people live to 105. We're gonna see people living to 150. And very instrumental in that is this. This thing that delivers all information to us. This thing that collects data and then feeds it back to us to, and it's going to make us healthier. And the companies that make these, these are all vehicles through which we are going to have better health. And I'll ask you, who owns them? Who makes them for you? Google and Apple, two must own companies. Okay, I think this is exciting. I think if you will recognize what is about to happen and put your money on it, you're gonna become wealthy. You will not be the victims of financial illiteracy in that if you'll stay with my channel, please, and see what I see and benefit from the experiences that I've had, that I've seen all this evolve. And now I wanna share it with you. I want you to become a member of our, our Discord. I want you to come to bestofusinvestors.com and share your knowledge with us. Let's make this a team sport. You don't need to be doing this by yourself. You need to share knowledge. And, and let me give you an example. I was ready to short the, the uh, NASDAQ with um, SQQQ. And I had some phone conferences with the members of my tribe. And they, they convinced me that I didn't know enough about it, that I was gambling, that I was taking a risk. And that was contrary to everything that I had preached in the past. And so I didn't do it. Would I have done it? Would I have taken that risk? Would I have taken that gamble in a field that I know little or nothing about if it wasn't for my tribe? Yes, I would have. And it would have been a mistake. Even if I had made some money on it, it would have been a mistake because I didn't have the knowledge I needed to make good financial decisions. Okay, um, I'd love to see you become a part of this. I think I can help you.